Let's talk Utah Jazz basketball. And Justin Zanuck, the general manager of the Utah Jazz, had um, a, a session with the media that was quite interesting um, in that he talked about whether or not Donovan Mitchell was going to be traded and whether or not anybody was going to be traded. And then he said this. If you had asked me, you know, three months ago about anybody on the roster or any sort of change, change is inevitable in the NBA. Um, I'm not trying to be cryptic or anything else, but. Are you sure? Um, Donovan's on our roster and, and he's a very, very important part of what we're trying to do. So, um, you know, things evolve in the NBA. So I, I couldn't sit here and say, you know, anybody is, you know, we're, we're trying to build a championship team, but there's no intent there at all. Utah Jazz General Manager Justin Zanuck, mm -hmm. when asked if there was, if the, the Jazz were trading Donovan Mitchell or uh -huh. he said, quote, there is no intent to trade Donovan Mitchell. And I, here's the thing I don't understand, and this is probably just me, and maybe I'm making too much of this. Right, right. If you weren't trying to trade Donovan Mitchell, why don't you just come out and say we're not trading Donovan Mitchell? I'm not trying to be cryptic. Why be cryptic? And this is the thing I I always struggle with with executives, and and I understand that you can't always be just straight up and blunt and honest right. in your actions and what you're doing, right? I, I right. totally understand that. But there comes a point where your words create more problems than they solve. And I wish I understood, Jake, why the Utah Jazz can't get this thing right with Donovan Mitchell. And I don't know. Maybe it's that they're not trying to. Maybe it is that they are just unintentionally not wordsmithing well. I don't know. But it feels like this muddied the water on trading Donovan Mitchell even more. Yeah, well, I think what it did is it gave breathing room to some of these, you know, some of these you know, rumors, if you will, or like some of these ideas around a Donovan Mitchell trade. And I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say that Justin Zanuck didn't, you know, I'm not going to say he messed this up because I, I think that's a little harsh. But what I am going to say is that you may have missed an opportunity to say like, hey, we're not trading Donovan Mitchell. Now, on the flip side of that, in his defense, I think that as an executive, you always have to be careful, you know, because you never want to say, well, we'd never trade Donovan Mitchell because, you know, if a certain player named Kevin Durant became available to you uh, and there was something you could work out, okay, maybe then Donovan Mitchell's available. But I think, you know, if I was Justin Zanuck in that moment, I might have said something like, you know, unless some ridiculous trade offer comes through, um, you know, we're probably not trading Donovan Mitchell because we're looking to build a championship team around him. And, and I think saying that is essentially just a touch different than what he said, but it has massive ramifications. That's yes. the thing. The words, yes. it's not that he said some horrible thing. It's not that you mess this up, but it does sort of feel like there was this opportunity to kind of draw this line in the sand like, hey, we're not trading him unless. And by the way, I also think it should be said, and this is just generally speaking, not even just with the Utah Jazz, but generally speaking, when you have executives doing media availability, you know, certain players demand, um, you know, strong statements out of their executives. So like a Donovan Mitchell caliber player is obviously in the realm of, hey, we're never going to trade this guy. You're obviously, that's an option for, you know, executives to say that. But you would never say that about a, a Royce O'Neal, obviously, or, or, or like that tier of player. So I also think that's at work as well. I think people wanted Justin Zanuck uh, and or Danny Ainge, because by the way, the one thing I haven't seen, Danny Ainge was sitting right next to him. I mean, Danny Ainge could have spoken on this as well. I just think they had an opportunity to draw a line in the sand. You and know? I, I don't know why he didn't. And what this does is it leaves the door open to conjecture. It leaves the door open to maybes, ifs, and ands, and, or and buts. No, and or... Not to cut you off, but I think we should. I just want to play the end real quick one more time because I feel like he kind of did, but like he could have done better with this. So this is just like the end of what he said. Listen carefully here. You know, things evolve in the NBA. So I, I couldn't sit here and say, you know, anybody is, you know, we're, we're trying to build a championship team, but. There's no intent there at all. There's no intent, There's no to, intent trade Donovan. to trade Donovan. So, hey, we're not actively trying to trade Donovan. Is different. That sounds different than, hey, we're not trading Donovan Mitchell unless, 
like some crazy trade came in. Well, and again, last night, you know, as as I am wanting to do on a couple time weekly basis, I reached out to my guy at the Jazz as we I usually talk to to people around the NBA on a daily basis. My guy at the Jazz last night straight up said, you know, we've gotten dozens of calls on Donovan Mitchell and we have not traded him. Right. Um, they are not engaging on calls uh, that involve trading for Donovan Mitchell. I don't know why Justin Zanuck. Well, I do know why. He's trying to play the part. Right. And I totally get that. But my whole thing here is it, you have to remember that Donovan Mitchell is somebody that listens to everything that they say. Donovan knows his situation with the Utah Jazz. There is no doubt about that. He has an open line of communication um, to, you know, Justin Zanuck, Danny Ainge, uh, certainly to Ryan Smith. Like, there's no question Donovan Mitchell knows where he stands with this team. I think the biggest question is, are the Jazz trying to, I don't know, court offers for Donovan Mitchell? Because it kind of feels like that's what this is. It kind of feels like this is a, a solicitation, non-solicitation. And I just don't... I. If you were truly married to Donovan Mitchell, and if he was truly untouchable and you had no intent of trading him, I think you would have been unequivocal that, you know, hey, we're not trading Donovan Mitchell. Right. And it's just interesting to me that those are the words he used. And it's interesting to me that there was no follow-up question to or answer from Danny Ainge. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. just, I think there's a lot of moving parts here. I agree with you. I think if if the Brooklyn Nets called and said, hey, you know, we want to acquire, you know, uh, Donovan Mitchell. What would it take to get that done? Um, obviously, they would have to make a move for Ben Simmons as well because you couldn't trade for both. But let's just say that they called. I mean, obviously, you're going to listen for a Donovan Mitchell for Kevin Durant. Right. But I can't see another situation. And as it's been explained to me by the Jazz multiple times, there's not another guy in this league that you're going to turn around and trade for. Let's be honest and say you're probably not getting Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Steph Curry. Right. The guy that it would take to get that deal done, you're not getting that guy. He's not readily available. They're not trading Donovan Mitchell. That's what I've been told a thousand and one times by the Jazz. And they have gotten, as it was described to me last night, dozens of calls from just about every team in the league inquiring about Donovan Mitchell, and they have not engaged in those trade talks yeah. on any level. So... My my feeling is the Jazz are not trading Donovan Mitchell. I don't know why they just don't come out and say that. I'm sure some of this is hyperbole. I'm sure we're reading far too much into what Justin Zanuck said. Frankly, he's an awkward guy. He is not a... I don't believe that Justin Zanuck is a comfortable public speaker in well, those settings. Well, and there's settings. definitely an art to it. There's definitely yeah. an art to it. Yeah, and I, I just think that's where this is. But I think the other question you have to ask is, should Donovan Mitchell be untouchable? Uh-huh. I don't know the answer to that question. We've debated this passionately on the show in the past. I don't believe that anybody on your roster should be untouchable. If Kevin Durant's coming, trade Donovan Mitchell. Right. But if there were to ever be an untouchable guy, it's Don. I mean, he's everything that you want in an NBA player. I mm -hmm. just don't know why you would entertain moving him. Yeah, and I think that, you know, to your point, the whole hyperbole thing is is very real in this situation. I feel like, you know, the Utah Jazz deal with a lot of, hey, the Miami Heat called, the Knicks called, your mom called. Like, all, like oh, my God, all these people are calling. They're trying to trade Donovan, which is not true. I think that... I think that, you know, it, it's easy to get on the rumor mill and get on the, the hype train about trading Donovan Mitchell. But again, I think I just think for where they are and what they're trying to do, it's a silly move to trade Donovan Mitchell in any package that doesn't include Kevin Durant. I I I, I it let's let me put it this way. If tomorrow we wake up and do the show and they've traded Donovan Mitchell in a package that includes Kevin Durant coming to the Utah Jazz, I will be happy to eat my crow sandwich because you just got way better. You know what I mean? Like, you just got way better. But again, I don't think that that's what they're looking at. And and that's why I say the, the whole idea of, like, trading Don to Miami or, like, trading him to New York or, like, all these scenarios are just exactly that, hyperbole. But once again, I want to say that I do think yesterday it was an opportunity to say, like, hey, like, yeah, we're not trading him unless we just get some ridiculous, yeah. like, Kevin Durant and 15-pick type deal. Like, we're not doing it. Yeah, I just don't – I don't know why you play the game. 
That's that's my. And point. the question is not to not to go too far on this, but but I don't even think that Justin was trying to play the game. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm underselling like what Zanuck's mission was there, but I don't really even think he was trying to play a game. I think that he is excellent at coach speak, as I call it, where like you're talking in circles, answering a question, but it sounds very professional. Yeah, you know, yep. like I think he's really good at that, but it just I, I just it didn't work out the way I think they intended it this, this time muddied the waters yeah. there's no other way to put yeah. it this it's just it's, i'm not trying to be cryptic but you were everything including cryptic and i i just wish that justin zana could answer the question clearly uh greg hawkins good morning to you, you movie and tv star stud right uh he said i didn't like zach wilson until today the true byu cougar yeah hey, we're focused on the jets today yeah, thank you for the uh, $5 there, Greg, as well. <laughs> the Zach Wilson story is going to be comedic gold when we yes, get to that in about five minutes. Please wait around for it. <laughs> uh, J.P. Shanahan <laughs> says, morning, mates. This, this is my concern now. Utah betting everything on Mitchell, but he could end up leaving anyways, as opposed to Gobert, who would have retired, likely retired a jazz man. Sure. Sure. Okay, but here's the thing. And, and and this is what we all have to get on the same page with. Not that you're wrong. I agree. Rudy loved being here. And if you'd allowed him to, he probably would have been a one-team guy. I totally agree with that. That said, I don't think that's what's, what is best for the organization from a championship perspective. I do don't you think want that, to win a championship yeah. or do you want to have Rudy Gobert jerseys? Yeah. You know, like I think that's as simple as it is. And and again, I, I, and I always go out of my way to say this. It's not that Rudy sucks or that he's a bad player. He is a tremendous player, but the the way he plays the game at the, his size at his position doesn't translate to one three point three percent of the salary cap. Yeah, Rudy Gobert was making twenty three point three percent of your salary cap. What's there to talk about, yeah. Caleb? Good morning, Caleb. Happy birthday to you, Caleb. Uh, he says, "Just got my Donovan Mitchell Heat jersey. That shit looks great." <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What See, that doing? wasn't cryptic. See, Caleb wasn't being cryptic. That was very straightforward and blunt. He's causing chaos. Yes. Uh, Rubney says he's not going to the Heat. Young three-time All-Star is worth far more than the sixth man, two bench players, and picks. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with that. Uh, Gage Carter says, glad I'm actually getting to catch the show live morning, dudes. What's up? Nice Hello. to see you. Uh, James Knight says, what's up, Bill and Ben, the flower pot men? Okay, okay. Is that okay. like a play on word? Like Bill and Ben, the You see how much pop. rhythm was in that comment? You know, Met, like, like the rhythm There was method. a lot of rhyme. The rhythm, uh, the method. rhythm method. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking of Zach Wilson, right. the rhythm method. Hey guys. Um, <laughs> it's going to get deep, I'm telling you. Wow. Like Zach wow. Wilson see? did. Oh! oh! oh he's straight pile driving them. <laughs> see what I did there? Like, anyway. Yeah, good job. Uh, Excellent Lucito work. Lucito Diaz says, I hope that Jazz will land a real number one because Mitchell, to me, is just a number two. Yeah, and I, you Could know be. that's a fair conversation. I don't think – you know, I disagree with that comment, but at the same time, like, I understand why you are why why you might say that and why some people might feel that way. I think it's fair. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Tanner says, morning, guys. Morning, Tanner. Hey, By the way, we went to the uh, RSL match on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. uh, saw a couple of our listeners there. Good to see Neville ninety three. By the way, big shout out to you and your uh, your lady who uh, found us at uh, Rio Tinto. Yeah, and uh, we had a good good uh, good conversation with Neville ninety three. And oh, by the way, RSL dropped two points at home that should have been theirs because yeah, they just stopped trying. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cohen Wiley says, "Hey, oh." Jake R., good morning to you. He says, morning, are we waiting for Kyrie to L.A. or a KD trade to get some uh, get things going? Yeah. I think it's – I do think it's Kyrie to L.A. I, I think um, – and, again, I was texting with a guy over the weekend who was telling me that um, Brooklyn is still in a position where they likely need to and definitely want to trade Kyrie before they move Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because, you know, trading Kyrie Irving gives them a little more flexibility – um, I think in all likelihood they would acquire Russell Westbrook if they trade KD to the Lakers and they would wind up buying him out, which would clarify their financial situation a little bit more. And by the way, I also think they'd like to go back to Kevin Durant and say, okay, look, here's where we are. This is what we have. Are you sure you want us to do this? Are you sure you want to be traded? Yeah. And I think Kevin Durant's going to say, yes, thank you. Have a nice day. And they're going to move him on to Phoenix because I think ultimately – Phoenix is the end destination. Yes. I don't I think there's almost no other likely landing spot for Kevin Durant. 
I, you know, much to, you know, the commenter's point about what Miami has, Miami doesn't have. Yeah. So I think Miami's not an option. Although I got to tell you, Kaminga and Wiseman um, here at the summer league, I, I, what Kaminga and Wiseman are doing and how good they look. I, I mean, they they put on a show yesterday for yes. Golden State and I think Kaminga had 27 Wiseman back in his first action, running the floor, catching alley oops, blocking shots. Like Kaminga and Wiseman look like the real deal. So again, I, I and I know it sounds crazy, and I know that all the Kevin Durant haters are going to come out in force. I'm telling you, Golden State should be a player for Kevin Durant. Yeah, um, he straight up said he would go back there. I think they would love to have him back. I think they would trade Kaminga and or Wiseman. Uh, Jonathan Kaminga's a stud, yeah. and I just. If I'm Golden State, it's going to take a whole lot. Oh, I don't know, like Kevin Durant to get Kaminga out of my out of my my fold. I just yeah, championships, man, man. championships. I I don't know how. And, and then by the way, this whole Mac McClung bailing on the Lakers to go to the Warriors. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this or not over the weekend, but Mac McClung, who was under contract um, with the Lakers for summer league, walked away from his deal with the Lakers to sign with Golden State, comes out with the Warriors, and just is tearing up summer league. Yeah. It is crazy how much talent Golden State has in their books right now. And you can't tell me, and I know this is the age-old value is what somebody's willing to pay or whatever. Mac McClung can play in the NBA. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know, and maybe I don't know how you feel about it. I mean, he's probably a 11 or 12 guy. But there's no doubt in my mind, Mac McClung can play at well, that level. Well, I think look, everyone's going to say, well, he's way undersized, and that means he can't play. And I disagree with that. I think that, I think that it does mean that he's got to play a certain way. It does mean that he's got to be very tactical with how he plays. He's got to pick his spot. Like he, he just needs to play the right way at his size. And I think he could be a contributor in the league. I, I think he, he is somebody who could be the second or third guy off your bench. That's what I think he could be. I, I don't. I think. You know, signing Mac McClung to be your 12th or 13th guy, it, to me, just doesn't make a lot of sense. But I think he can be that firecracker off your bench, and he can come in and, you know, pick up the pace of the game, give you, like, five to eight minutes at a time where you're just playing with your hair on fire. And I think that could change the dynamic of a game. And so, for me, it, uh, again, assuming the money's right, because obviously he's someone who gets signed after all the big stuff is done, then I don't see why you wouldn't sign him. Yeah, I, I, I just think he's Mac McClung. Yeah. Still should have gone to BYU when he transferred. Right. He didn't. But Mac McClung can play in this league. And and that they added him at Golden State, there's a reason you go play for Golden State. Right. Because stylistically, that's a great fit for him. And I that was fun to watch. I got to tell you, I enjoyed that uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, I enjoyed that. Let's see. Um, man, good comment. I appreciate you guys this morning. Gabe Ledley, good morning to you. Um... How am I going to pronounce this name? Nolslin Peace says, Dame to Utah. Not going to happen. Uh, Jeremy Bolton says, what is up with y'all? Jeremy Bolton up, did a Spartan race over yeah, the casual. weekend. Did you wear your headband and Caruso jersey during the race? He, I believe he did. No, he wore his Caruso thong. Oh, right. He had on right, it. Right. Because you know the guys who do Spartan races, or what's that other one with the... Uh, Iron Man. And there's another one as well. I can't remember what it's called. But they do all those cool racing series, and then they like put stickers on their cars and right. You know, like Bolton had the sixteen point one, exactly or whatever it is, twenty six point two. Yeah, like you're just that douche that has a twenty six point two sticker on your back window. On you. <laughs> don't put twenty. Don't please don't. Uh, put, what is the name of that race where the, it's got the symbol on the the mud run, the Spartan race, the Iron Man? Huh? No, it's not Iron Man. There's another one. Where they they everybody puts the sticker on their window and stuff like, whatever. <coughs> anyway, Spartan races are cool. Jeremy Bolton, I could never do one, so good for you. Just don't be a douche and put a Spartan race. Do you? I did you put? He just got a new Kia, didn't he? Get a Telluride? Damn! Did you put? Jeremy, that did you put a sticker on your Telluride? Wow! Are you kidding wow. me? Wow! Stop it. Uh, Tanner Plummer says, "Sweet, uh, sweet, what I did there." LOL. That needs to be on a shirt. Okay, what, 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 what did, did he did say? There? What did he do? What I don't did, I know. I have no idea. Uh, Lucito Diaz, the media listen to your show, Monty, because they ask things that you guys point out to them. 
Oh, the stories I could tell. But we, uh, won't. But we won't. Alex Chacon says, uh, I don't think Don is untouchable, but they're going to have to throw out a KD-type offer to get him. I would Agreed. totally agree with that, Alex. Gabe Ledley says, it sounds like he's baiting Donovan to ask for a trade so they have an out. Ooh, that's interesting. Hadn't thought about it that way, Gabe. Um, I'm not trying to be cryptic. You, but you were cryptic, Justin. That's interesting. That, I don't know. Do you, are you trying to bait your best player? No. Could be. Uh, Noslin Peace says, Don is too emotional when the Jazz start to lose. Everyone has uh, free real estate in his head. Yeah. Next comment. Could be. Uh, Greg Hawkins says, Donovan is still young. No, I think his mental toughness will continue to improve. I agree with that. Uh, Jake R says, did Jake just mention buckets Oh, trash can? Buckets Oh, trash can. I, that's a major bag alert for sure. Uh, Brett Robbins, Donovan was spotted eating a chocolate bar, and you know what that means. Hershey, Mitchell at a Sixers. Well, well. I do. I do love the fact that he tweets music lyrics all the time, and people are like, Monty, what's it mean? Oh, what's it mean? Like, I will get a, a I will get a, he'll tweet, and I'll get six or eight DMs. Infowars.com. Hey, can you ask your sources what this means? And I'm like, it's a Lil Wayne song. Infowars.com. Right, but what does it mean that he tweeted? Why, why does it mean that he tweeted that? Look, I'm in my mom's basement, and there's a lot of mildew down here. It's in my brain now, so I need to know what a meaningless <laughs> tweet about <laughs> lyrics means. Because trust me when I say I've painted the walls down here with my seed like I'm Zach Wilson wow. in my mom's back. Wow, wow, wow. So everything's like, wow. Wow. Cougar action. Wow. Cougar action. I'm On the hunt. You. I cannot wait to talk about yes. that. Uh, Gabe Ledley says, let's be honest, though. There are literally no consequences for saying we are never trading X player and then doing so. Yeah. Just say Donovan is forever a jazz man and keep it moving. Yeah, next question. <laughs> exactly right, Well Gabe. played. Well exactly played. Exactly right. Well um, played. Alexander Duque says, only jazz bear is untouchable. Yeah. We're at the RSL match the other night, and they have all the mascots there. My wife's like, what is the RSL mascot? And I'm like, well, it's Jazz Bear with a wig on. That's all. Wow. Because that's pretty much what it was. It was kind of awkward. I don't know. Uh, Caleb, I, I I just go back to the Caleb to the to the Heat jersey thing. Yeah. Because I do think that's amazing. Lorenzo Miranda, good morning to you. Uh, Lorenzo says, if we're trading Donovan, it's going to be for Katie or something like Jason Tatum. It better be. It has to be. It better be. Taryn Powell says, good morning from New Zealand. Hello. Good morning. Tanner says, this show is going to go off the rails when we get to the Zach Wilson story. <laughs> yeah, Count listen, down. Listen, hey man, I'm telling you, it's <laughs> testosterone, sex, and older women. What is? How do you keep that on the rails? Maybe I'm... I don't know. I, we're not going to try to keep it on the rails. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Kylan G says, morning, fellas. The stance from the front office seems like they're telling Mitchell, okay, prove you're uh, uh, number one. Here's your chance. Yeah, I, w I don't disagree with that at all. Yeah. At all. Rubney, Mitchell is absolutely capable of being number one, though. I think there's uh there is a few years. Yeah. We'll see. I think he'll get there in a few years. Yeah, I think you're probably I don't right. think he's got a few years to get there though. I think he needs to get there pretty quick. Yeah. JT says Jake, shave your head. Okay. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. Ragnar, <laughs> yes. Yes, Spencer. Ragnar. Yes, Spencer. Here Morning. we go. Hey, look at my Ragnar sticker on my car. <laughs> I've got, look, okay, so these are the stickers of my little kids. There's my husband. Uh, there I, that's me right there in the middle, the thin shot one. Shot them Obama. Uh, you're like 400 pounds. Yeah, but in the sticker, I'm thin, what? so it's fine. And then there's Jimmy and Tana and Breland <coughs> and Mitchell. <coughs> and then my Ragnar sticker. 26.2. Fat. <clears throat> I, feel, <laughs> I feel better. I, oh, Mrs. Monty was oh, not an early be entry into the yeah. show. There's so much hate there. Not twenty six point two. <laughs> I did it. You didn't have another donut, Chubbs. <laughs> That's what it wow. feels like. <laughs> I feel like you are like this is your inner voice reflecting on you, because I don't think someone putting a Ragnar sticker on their car is calling you. A <laughs> on the next, Doctor Laura, is your inner voice reflecting on your rectum? <laughs> That's yes. what yeah. <laughs> okay. has happened. Go away. 
<gasps> come back in when we talk about Zach's mom. Um, <laughs> well, no, that's see, that would that's different. The step, his see, it wasn't with his, his mom. That's Dax's mom. No, Dax Milne, your mom, your daddy. Anyway, whoa, probably you, too much. You, you tried, you tried. Whoa, but, you know, I got confused. Are you out of your goddamn mind? I am. Thank you. I am. Big Dog O Town says, "Why so much Don hate?" Well, I think when you're the best player on a team, you're going to get hate. Yeah, that's natural. I mean, there's Jimmy it's Butler natural. hate. There's I Kevin mean, Durant hate. Kobe Bryant hate. LeBron hate. It, it it just don't matter. Dax Milne hate. You know, no, there ain't no Dax Milne hate. Uh, Jesus Christ destroys Marxism. Oh, we changed. Okay. We okay. changed. We've evolved. Okay. Uh, says no. I think Pat Benz gets to stay here. You mean Pat Bev? Uh, gets to stay here. They're not going to be that dumb. Danny ain't just going to stupid. He's going to use him. Still got gas left in the tank. Yeah, they're not releasing. I saw this the other day, too. They're yeah. not releasing Pat Bev. Yeah. We just need to stop with the, hey, release Pat Patrick Beverly. Yeah. That's not going to happen. My holy king. Oh, so many meanings there. <laughs> Kyrie is going to be... Uh, Kyrie is going to the Lakers. It's a done deal. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, question. everybody sent tends to think that but until that deal's done yeah um i don't know that i would call it a done deal because there's so much complexity in this kevin durant situation and i think the timing and the order of those moves is critical i think you have to be very aware of the impact that trading Kyrie has on kevin durant um i don't see any way as it's been explained to me by nba sources i don't see any way you trade Kyrie and kd on the same team yeah i just i i don't think that that works um but i could absolutely see a situation where Kyrie ends up in la and kd ends up in phoenix um i i just think that makes so much sense and i do think that phoenix has enough to offer i think you bring in a third team that's got draft capital for the nets i think that makes a lot of sense and the other thing that it does and this is interesting this was brought up to me over the weekend as well the other thing that that does is this that allows the Brooklyn Nets to have more time with Ben Simmons to say, okay, you're physically healthy. You're dealing with some mental issues. Like, Hey, if you're not a hundo P let's, let's get you there. Cause now we're kind of in rebuilding mode. Let's give him more time. Yeah. That makes more sense to me. Agreed. Because Agreed. I think the other thing I think is pretty clear is that Sean Marks is making the rounds in Las Vegas. I mean, yeah. He is. I think that trade happens this week. I really do. Yeah, it tends to happen during summer league. I mean, that's when. I mean, historically speaking, we've seen quite a bit of moves happen that way. Yeah, so totally agree. Uh, Mesh says Don for Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart and picks would do it. Mm, I don't know that that would do it. Jalen Brown or Donovan Mitchell? Well, right here today, you got to go Jalen Brown. He's been to the finals. Um, I think. I think. Hmm. But I don't think that Jalen Brown's ever been asked to be number one. That's the difference. I would take Donovan over Jalen Brown. If it was 1v1, now, if you want to give me Jalen and Marcus Smart, I'm probably making that trade. Mm. If you want to give me Jalen and Marcus Smart, there's going to have to be picks involved. But Jalen, Marcus Smart, and two picks, I'm doing that deal. I think Marcus Smart is – the question is, again, with Marcus Smart is, what is his his level of want to in Utah? Right. Because if he doesn't want to, then that trade doesn't work. Right. Because I don't want that guy at half speed. So my feeling is is I would take Donovan over Jalen, but a package with Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart, I'm probably doing that. I'm probably doing that. Yeah. Uh, Crypto Dole Fan Super Bowl. Uh, okay. Is that on your birth certificate? Uh, says, how can Jesus destroy Marxism when he is one? Here we go. Wow. Different show, bro. <coughs> on BYU Radio. <laughs> Uh, Kate, Kylan G says Monty's on one today. Oh, wait. Um, Tanner says, all right, let's get American pie. Zach Wilson story rolling. Yeah. Close, close. Do you guys know that story? Oh, uh, Mike Phillips, Jesus Christ failed to destroy atheism. So we moved on to Come Marxism. On. Stay Bro. tuned for veganism next. Bro. Jesus Christ versus vegans. Facts. No. Um, Spencer Morgan says Christians invented Marxism before Marx. Bro, why are you guys going down the rabbit hole on this? Kind of like Zach Wilson. <laughs> I'm not trying to be cryptic. <laughs> Had to. Um, the Nye Guy, Lonely Island Mother Love video just got another million views on YouTube. <laughs> uh, I love it. Uh, Aga Narca. N A R C A. Uh, JC will be traded to the Celtics. That's what they said. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. John Jackson, as much as Kyrie and Katie want to be traded, they want Brooklyn to receive a high return or then it's an insult to what they're worth. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. I think there's bad blood with Kyrie in Brooklyn. I think he'd like to walk away for free, but he didn't want to give up 37 million bucks. Can't have it both ways, kid. No, you can't. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Come on. Strange Clouds. Good morning to you, my friend. He says, why is everyone in the media talking crap on Donovan? Everyone also thinks the Jazz are done dealing. I, they're not close to done yeah. dealing. The Donovan Mitchell thing is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So, no, I don't think he should be untouchable, but he's as untouchable as you can get. Yeah. In my opinion with the Jazz. And the other thing that I think is pretty clear here um, is that Justin Zanuck didn't do himself any favors when he talked about, you know, hey, this whole thing with there's no intent to trade Donovan Mitchell. I just, that, I, that, that's weird wording. Yeah. Like, I, to me, that feels like that's odd wording. We're, we're trying to build a championship team, but there's no intent there at all. What does that, what does that really there's mean? There's no intent there. So does why that mean not like just, you didn't try to trade why him? Why not or? just say, hey, we're not trading him. Our, we are not working actively to trade Donovan Mitchell. And, and we can play it again. I mean, let's we can play it one more All time right, just so to hear the whole thing. Justin Zanuck was, was asked, hey, are you guys trying to trade Donovan Mitchell? If you had asked me, you know, three months ago about anybody on the roster or any sort of change, change is inevitable in the NBA. Um, I'm not trying to be cryptic or anything else, but... Um, Donovan's on our roster, and, and he's a very, very important part of what we're trying to do. So, um, you know, things evolve in the NBA, so I, I couldn't sit here and say, you know, anybody is, you know, we're, we're trying to build a championship team, but there's no intent there at all. I, like Utah Jazz General Manager Justin Zanuck. Look, I, I don't want to take the guy to the woodshed over awkward. these comments, but I, I think that I agree he's made some trouble for himself that wasn't I would, necessary. I wish somebody would have said, hey, Justin, by the way, just to follow up, what does no intent there mean? Can you, like, that's that's what needed to be asked. Like, I need to know what no intent means because you've got to get them uh, as close to a yes or no as possible. Yes. Because I think this leaves, there's no doubt this leaves gray area. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely gray area. I mean, I definitely think that, like I said before, and if you're just joining the show, I mean, we talked about this about 10 minutes ago. Like, I, I think that Justin Zanuck is excellent at coach speak and and sometimes goes, you know, a little bit too far with it. Like, I think this would have been a prime opportunity to just simply say, like, unless, literally, he should have just said, like, unless we get some ridiculous Kevin Durant trade, like like Kevin Durant and three picks, let's say, or, or, or some type of offer for a premier player in the league like Kevin yes. Durant that that nobody in their right mind would turn down. We're not trading Donovan Mitchell. I, I think that what that is what I, I would have liked to have heard out of Justin Zanuck. That said, we didn't get that. We got there's no there's no intent there to trade Donovan Mitchell. So I take that to mean that yeah, we're not we're not trying to trade Donovan Mitchell. That's what I take it as, but again, it's important to say we, People are going to take you at your word. Like, hey, this is what you said, so what does that mean? In in fact, most times in sports, it's what you didn't say, just like in this case. So you didn't say definitively, no, we're not trading them unless, you know, like, so I just think he caused trouble for himself. They didn't need to. Yeah, and by the way, one other thing I want to get to, because um, I want to, everybody in the comments, I want you to get in on this and, and give me your thoughts on Jared Butler. Because last week in in Salt Lake, he did not look good. He did not look good, and I thought it was interesting on Saturday night. He looked really good. Mm -hmm. um, that is by far the best game I've seen. Just or uh, excuse me, Jared Butler play in a Jazz uniform. Um, now it's summer league; you got to discount it. I totally understand that, but it's not the numbers that stood out to me because he didn't shoot well. But what stood out to me was the command of the offense, the command of the floor. Um, the understanding of what the defense was trying to do, his level of defense coming up. Mm -hmm. How impressed were you with Jared Butler? Yeah, I mean, I thought he played well. I thought uh, he showed a little bit better command of the offense, you know, and I thought that's why you got to the seven assist number. Uh, I think that, you know, shot selection was okay. You know, it wasn't great A, but but good enough, you know, and, and I think that that type of performance, like 15 and seven, 15 and five, 
you know, being that kind of guy that can come off, come off the bench behind Donovan and facilitate a little bit and spell him for five to seven minutes, I think is what Jared Butler needs to be for this team right now. I, like we said last week, you know, I don't, I don't think that Jared Butler ever develops into a starter in this league, but I do think he can be a quality bench contributor. You know, I, I, again, I want to be really clear. I don't think he could be like a Lou Williams level score in his prime, let's say, but I do think he can be, you know, on a great night, his best game ever for the Utah Jazz. Yeah, I could see Jared Butler putting up 20 on any given night, but I think most nights you're probably 12 to 15 points and a couple of assists. I think that's what his game looks like. And I think a lot of those points would come from three because he can shoot it a bit. So that's, I, I yeah, I, I was, I, I, I don't find myself feeling impressed because I know that he's capable of this level of performance, but I was happy to see that he finally put those numbers up because again, as we discussed last week, it had been a real struggle in Salt Lake. He needed, he needed to, and he needs to continue to have uh, a good showing in Vegas because uh, they, they need him. Like there's no other way to say it. Like their, their bench is not incredibly deep right now. Like, yeah, you got some newer guys, but you need depth on this thing. And I think that if Jared Butler could be that, that would be phenomenal. Yeah, you need depth. Yeah, I mean, this team has struggled over the last several years for depth. I, yeah. I think that's the thing that really, you know, that really stands out to me is that depth has been an issue on this roster. So, um, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see. James Knight, uh, sorry, your comment got bumped, but James Knight wants to know if we put a new shoe on the wall. We there did. it is. Uh, is that a new add to your kicks collection, Monty? Indeed it is. Over Jake's uh, right shoulder there. It is the uh, Air Jordan 312 trainer. It is essentially the Bo Jackson trainer and an Air Jordan 3 combined. And it's glorious. Yes. I've been waiting on that shoe a long time. Yes. A long time. Uh, let's see. Jeremy Bolton says, hey, I don't have stickers on my car. I'm a douche, but not Ragnar Marathon sticker on my car level douche. Hey guys. I would have <laughs> worn my Caruso jersey, but I would have been disqualified <laughs> disqualified for weed possession. Facts. See what he did there because Alex Caruso went through the airport with weed and he got arrested for weed. And so now Jeremy Bolton's like, hey, you know, like toke one up for Zach's mom, bro. You know, like that's where he, right. you know. I see and, the connection. And stuff. Right. You know, cougars. Right. You know. Right. Cougars smoke weed right. and stuff. Uh, oh, New Jersey update. Caleb says, yo, my KD Heat jersey came too. What a great day. <laughs> KD to the Heat. See, is, it, is it 35 or is it 7? Oh, it's 7. It has to be 7, right? Yeah. Uh, Spencer Morgan, uh, if you've decided to do a full rebuild, but you can't admit to your fans you're doing a full rebuild, see what the Jazz are doing there? They didn't, but they're not. See, I disagree it's, with it's this. It's a retool. It's a tool, not a build. I got a That's tool. That's different. <laughs> Zach Wilson does. What's up, uh, motherfuckers? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I think it's a retool, not a rebuild. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any doubt, in, in my mind anyway. Um, Tanner Plummer, hey, guys. Hey, hey. Hey, guys. Right. Hey, Mont. Hey Overall, what did you think of Rio Tinto experience? Hey it was hot. Everything was on fire. Um, and the air... It, the, my main complaint always has been at Rio T that um, the air doesn't move well in that joint. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I always find myself there like on the hottest day that's ever been recorded on the face of the sun. Right. Um, so... It was it was 101 degrees at, at kickoff. No, nah, I'm good. I'm and good. we had really good seats. We were not surrounded by a bunch of, you know, cocoa infected Fs. But <laughs> it was still pretty hot. The air did not move real well in that joint. By the way, by the yeah. way, we paid $150 a ticket. Damn. And the best you can do is pre-wrapped hot dogs in a bun. Now You weren't you weren't amused by that. No, you get free food with the club seat. We were in the Zions Bank Club. Yeah. But I got to tell you, the burger was really good. The hot dogs were not. And the, the pretzel bites, don't do the pretzel bites. No. I had one. Like, they, they give them to you for free. So right. it's like a, a cup with pretzel bites in it. I ate one. I was like, nah, man. Did they have cheese? Uh, no. They were cinnamon sugar. Oh. But they were terrible. Okay. They were terrible. Okay. It was not good. Jesus Christ destroys Marxism. Okay. <laughs> uh, to that guy that just blasphemed Jesus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Jesus is only fulfilling scripture. He's such a fool. He's doing, uh, he's mocking and doing exactly what Jesus said he would do. What a fool. Yeah, I've been immunized. So, you know, Paul and Ted and Jesus were sitting on a tree stump one day. What about Johnny Smith, bro? Come on. Who's, jo you mean Joey Smith? Um, are, 
are we really debating whether or not somebody blasphemed <laughs> Jesus on this show? <laughs> Guy, we're talking about pounding old woman box, and you're worried about <laughs> blaspheming Jesus? Just the least of your concerns, sir. Okay. Um, so that sounds cool. <laughs> Wow. Uh, okay, Brett Robbins. Ainge also brought up Bo Cruz. But, Bo, see, what, that's Bo Cruz reference. Oh, Cincinnati. It's a Wenacho Belgrande reference. Uh, so maybe Cruz Missile, will the Cruz Missile. The cr see what he did there? Bo the, Cruz, see what he did there? The, the Cruz, Cruz missile, missile. Get it? Get it? We'll be in Utah. Right. I could see them bringing him back, honestly. I could. Uh, <laughs> Greg Hawkins. Hey, Tanner Plummer. Zach Wilson also blew his lead. <laughs> See what we did there? 